It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC Q2577PWQ. OSD is controlled by little pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel here, on near the right side. There's also a little power indicator here which glows blue when the monitor is on and goes red when it's on standby or in a low power state. If you press the first button there, you can select the source that the monitor is using. Second button along, the left arrow, press that alone and you can activate the clear vision function which is a little thing that increases the sharpness of the monitor. So you can set that to weak which just gives a, sh a slight increased sharpness, medium is a bit of a stronger effect it's actually um, already quite excessive even at the medium setting and the strong setting it's just uh, to be honest makes me want to rip my eyes out of the sockets but um, I really prefer to leave that off for a more natural look to the image um, but uh, some people do like to use it especially if they're running lower resolution images or they're running the monitor at a lower than native resolution Press the right button there and control the volume of the integrated speakers of the monitor or anything that's connected to the audio out um, jack. And the next button along allows you to access the main menu and of course there's a power button which is the last button there. So the main menu is set out in AOC's usual widescreen style uh, making quite good use of the horizontal screen space there. It's they also have used the same kind of little images and uh, layout for quite a while on their monitors. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. It's uh, it's not the flashiest menu system, but it gets the job done. So first up, there's a luminance section that allows you to change basic things like contrast and brightness. You can select an eco mode, which is basically just a preset brightness for the monitor. So there's standard, text, internet, game, movie. So these aren't presets. Uh, per se, they just change the brightness level of the monitor to various different uh, values. There are three different gamma modes that were explored in the review, gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3. There's DCR which stands for dynamic contrast ratio and that's the dynamic contrast feature of the monitor which is explored in the review and also explored in the review in quite some detail is the overdrive greater grey acceleration feature of the monitor and you can set that to off, weak, medium or strong and as per the review I'd recommend leaving it on medium which is the default setting. Next up there's an image set setup bit which is only actually available if you're using a VGA analog connection so I'm using a digital DisplayPort connection at the moment so I can't even access that menu so there's next colour setup and that allows you to select a preset colour temperature so there's warm, normal, which as I explore in the review is not normal at all it's extremely bright and blue and quite bizarre really cool which is even more blue by the looks of things I don't even look at that in the review because it's uh, I don't really see the practical application of that sRGB which is explored in the review has some potential use but uh, locks out the brightness setting which isn't very useful and user which allows you to manually configure the red, green and blue colour channels there is a DCB dynamic colour boost which selectively oversaturates certain shades um, for example if you want to, to highlight skin so it looks, well, sunburnt and quite unrealistic. Um, so that sort of just brings out reds and uh, pinks in the image. Green field does the same with greens, makes greens oversaturated. And sky blue, which does the same sort of oversaturation with uh, certain blue shades. So I'd recommend leaving that off for a natural image, but feel free to play around with that, because I know some people like uh, their monitor to look a bit funky. Next there's a picture boost section and this allows you to select this bright frame feature and as 
is usual on AOC monitors. This is just highlights a certain section of the screen and allows you to alter the digital brightness and contrast of that particular section. So it's not the same as the brightness control on the main monitor because it's um, it doesn't actually affect the backlight at all. Um, obviously the backlight doesn't have zonal control on monitors so you can't just selectively change the, the, the backlight brightness at one particular area of the screen so it's purely digital. So if I just make this a bit bigger you can see um, yeah, a little, little area of the screen being highlighted there. Next, there's OSD setup, which allows you to change things like the language that the OSD is displayed in, a timeout period after the last button press, after which the OSD will disappear on its own. That's in seconds. And you can change the horizontal and vertical position of the menu and also select a level of transparency. So by default that is 25, which I'm quite happy with, but if you want to make it more transparent you can. If you want to make it more translucent, uh, or entirely translucent, you can. There's also a break reminder feature, which will just pop up a little message on the screen after one hour to remind you to take a break from the monitor. And then there's an extra menu which allows you to change things like the input used by the monitor. You can manually select it if you want, or have it automatically selected. You might want to manually select it if you've got multiple um, devices connected to the monitor and you want to manually select a specific device to be used. There is also an auto-config option, greyed out, because it is something that only applies to analogue connections, and I'm using a digital connection, so you don't need to worry about that. As an off timer feature and what that'll do is it'll automatically turn off the monitor after a given period of time in hours after a, a signal has stopped being detected so if you turn your computer off and you have this off timer set to say one hour it'll uh, the monitor will turn itself off um, i mean it will use a little bit of electricity because you'll still have it plugged in um, and it'll still be in a state ready to turn back on with just the power button press, but uh, can be a useful feature anyway. But if you've got that set to zero, 00, that means it's disabled and that's the default state. There's an image ratio feature which is greyed out here, and that allows you to select whether the image stretches to fit the screen or whether it will. Um, respect the aspect ratio that you've got. So it's greyed out if you've got any 16 by 9 um, resolution selected, as I have here, obviously the uh, the native resolution. Um, but if you're using a resolution with a different aspect ratio, you can, you can select that. There's DDC slash CI, the plug and play functionality for the monitor. And you should just leave that enabled. That allows you to control the monitor by software, for example. And there's a reset function which allows you to reset everything to the factory defaults. And finally, there's just a little bit of information here, such as the resolution that the monitor is currently running at, and also the refresh rate. And that's all there is to it. That was the OSD on screen display menu system of the AOC Q2577PWQ. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.